Greetings everyone, this is Rock and Rock and Show with the Willie Comic Book Roundup. As I stated in my last video, we're getting an early start on things for this week, since there's a bit to go over, so let's get started, kicking things off. We've got Darth Vader number 30. Where we left off, the rest of, of uh, Padme's handmaidens were making a move, their move against Vader with uh, uh, Dorme impersonating Sabe to get close to Vader and potentially in the hope of finding Sabe. Sabe, meanwhile, has been sent to uh, Red Top 4 to uh, kill uh, Yol Tambor, who is trying to start some sort of a revolution among, among his people. And she seemingly shot and killed him. But uh, Vader saw through Dorme's uh, deception and basically said, yeah, um, Sabe, serves me. Sabe serves me. So we open with uh, two of the other handmaids wondering what's, what's become of. Uh, With uh, Ayrte and uh, Sashe trying to figure out what's become of uh, Dorme. Um, but they, they've managed, they got a droid who's uh, basically hacked the, uh, the executor, gotten various, gotten all the uh, information they need. I don't know where Sabe is, but. Uh, As it, as it does so, the droid sees uh, Ochi and Bestoon, Dorme, and Vader heading towards the, the landing bay. But um, Ochi's trying to start shit, hoping, hoping to rid himself of uh, Sabe. And uh, Dorme's given a bit of a choice. And once again, is informed that Sabe serves is her Vader of her own free will. And you know, there's first one way out, one way she's going to survive this, and that's to claim the same power. Um, on Brentall Four. The ship flies in, blasting up the area where uh, Tambor was just shot by uh, by Sabe, picking up Tambor and Sabe. Turns out she shot him in a, in a way that uh, would actually not, that wouldn't immediately kill him. But uh, his system and his body is repaired, and Tambor explains that uh, among, the th among the things he's been doing has been... Uh, Building an army, an army of droids that have been that had been uh, previously killed by Darth Vader. And he he's been studying the, the data files from all these droids to find a weakness. And well, there is one, Sabe. So the uh, handmaidens follow Vader on his shuttle to uh, the planet uh, Fidal, which leads to a, a fight between the, the four handmaidens and Vader. And uh, they trade themselves. This, they got some of the codes for the code in his uh, armor or an earlier. Uh, Earlier, an earlier fight with him, but uh, they've triggered a self destruct on the executor. At the same time, though, Yol Tambor sends a, a, a transmission to Vader, claiming that he has Sabe, and you know, come and get her. And so Vader says, says to the handmaidens. 
you know, okay, Sabe's in danger. You want to re- you want to save her? <clears throat> then join me. And the issue ends with Vader returning to the Executor with the four handmaidens in tow. That's that is definitely something interesting. <laughs> it is stated that uh, since uh, basically Vader appeals to the fact that Padme uh, had a premise for order, and well, sir, working with him, that's what he's trying to do is bring about order to the galaxy. So yeah, moving on though to our next book, we've got Doctor Aphra number twenty-seven. This is uh, one of the ones I think from. This is from the end of last month, the latter half of last month at least. So we probably have another Doctor Affirmation coming out in this or next in the next few weeks. Let's say either this coming week or the week after. Where we left off, um, the Spark Eternal, which uh, had taken over Doctor Afra. Um, seemingly destroyed uh, Son of Star Wars' ship. And uh, Kofan uh, Faris had uh, hooked, had joined up with uh, Crimson Dawn. And, uh, yeah, they kind of put a massive target on, the, on their backs for the Empire. But, uh, Ariel Ewan, just lucky, find the remains of Sana's ship, and Sana wakes up in a, in a box of tank on Canto Bight in Ronan Tage's penthouse. Basically, he explains that uh, these, that, that as these are cutting edge box of tanks, and they likely would not have survived a, a normal one, and they, well, the use co- using them costs money, so yeah. They can, they, they'll, they're in de- they are indebted to him. Millions of credits apiece. But uh, and Ariel U explains that, or just lucky explains that, yeah, that that's how Tage gets you. Um, on the, the Archangel Four in the Outer Rim, the Spark Eternal is uh, having just destroyed, seemingly destroyed uh, Sana's ship. It's talking with Triple Zero, who's conversing with her as well as uh, BT-1. Complimenting the Spark Patrol, and... Uh, that something goes wrong. The... Uh, her uh, circuitry tattoos and the entire arm of them have gone numb. Afra has managed to find a way to take back, take back control. Explaining that she, uh, as the Spark Eternal decided is to get rid of Triple uh, Zero's uh, vocabulator, in trying to do that, she ended up uploading a rather nasty uh, virus and in, into Afra. But, uh, basically, after making a play to get her, a play to get her body back, and uh, the Spark Journal explains they're going Sith hunting, which is why all she has all the uh, artifacts she's got. Ko sends a message. Um, To Detta, one of part of uh, Sana's crew, <laughs> telling her what's going on, and well, thinking it's kind of there, it's probably not going to work out. On Canto Bite, um, Sana initially says that the decision they made is that no, they're not going to work for Tage because well. They figure that Tage, you know, they, you know, okay, fine. That's Tage Co Tech, fine. They'll, they'll, they're working, already working for Dom, for Domina Tage, so, and they'd rather stay on the, you know, the winning side there. However, the, 
Ronan explain. But Ronan has a plan. He wants he wants the Spark Eternal to just put on display. Sana explains that if that if they do what he what's asked, then what's likely to happen is that he'll get it. Demeter will then take it from him, kill take kill Ronan, and kill all of them for betraying her. However, Ronan explains that he's allied with Crimson Dawn, so and Crimson Dawn thinks that Tejo could the Tage Corporation can use some new management, namely Ronan. So they change they say, okay, fine. We'll join Crimson Dawn. And uh they'll go ki- they'll go to kill Domina Tage. That is where the issue ends. It's uh <laughs> yeah. Definitely be something. Moving on, though, to our next book, we've got Han Solo and Chewbacca number eight. I have to admit, I was surprised this this became a, this was a an ongoing rather than a mini, but I'm not I'm not complaining. Just kind of surprised. Where we left off, um, Han and Chewie had been reunited, but the Falcon was still uh, out of their reach. They managed to find get a lead on who's got it. Which has brought them to Moss Icy Spaceport, where they toss Greedo out of more than likely Chalmers Cantina. Why don't you know where the Falcon is? Apparently, it's in uh, Docking Bay 9 of Mosenta. They find out what happened. Greedo cheated some hand, a few hands of cards got to get the ship. He puts it, he cheated better than everybody else. But they know where the urn is. It's on Coruscant, in the office of none other than Grand Moff Tarkin. But, um, Phaedra has a plan to get, which involves, uh, Han and Chewie entering through the sewers while Phaedra finds another way in. Um, Corbus, uh, if I remember correctly, the guy that uh, masqueraded as Han's father, is taken in by uh, Is arrested by a by a marshal, the same one that arrested uh, Chewie earlier. Um, a message at five D six R A eight arrives at uh, Tarkin's office with an urgent communication from the Emperor for Grand Moff Tarkin. Passes it along to Tarkin. Tarkin decides to uh, go speak to the Emperor. Person about it. I'll take some of the some death troopers with him. Han and Chewie show up through the uh, coming through the bathroom. The droid was in fact Phaedra in disguise. They get the urn, and shortly after, as they're leaving Parker's office, well, yeah, they're they're having to fight off the death troopers, but They blast out a window, jump onto a, a repulsor train. Uh, uh, Stormtroopers uh, land on their, come out with them. Wings Chewie, who then falls off the train, and seemingly to, and, uh, and there's nothing below, nothing directly below him for him to land on. And that is where the issue ends. Obviously, Chewie's gonna survive. You know. He was in a few movies af- that are set after this, so, you know. But, uh, yeah, this is getting interesting. This, this, well, it's been interesting from the get-go, but, yeah. I'm digging it. Not, not, not regretting picking up, that's for sure. Moving on to our next book, we've got Yoda, number two. Where we left off, um, again, this is, this, as well as Han Solo uh, and uh, Chewbacca, were from a couple of weeks, were from last month. Yoda has been uh, staying on a small outer rim world, away from the uh, the Jedi Council. 
but he's helping to defend a, uh, helping a one tribe on the planet to survive against another. <laughs> They're more, uh, <clears throat> advanced and violent tribe. Some of the, uh, members of the council come to see, um, Yoda, who should, and Yoda suggests that he, that they should probably come to the, to, uh, Turak. <clears throat> but, uh, they've been building a watchtower, and, uh, when one of, when one of the, when the, while I'm working on the watchtower, one of, at the top, some of, there's a slight accident, Yoda stops, and Yoda prevents some boards from falling on some of the, uh, the natives. They're also training in uh, fighting styles, generally the stat, staff based. When uh, the rival faction appears, and, um, but the youngest of the, the closest ally among the Turok to Yoda, he found something that could help. But, Basically, a sonic emitter that manages to uh, stop the, uh, the rival from their tracks. Where Yoda's missing. They find his lightsaber, but not him. They also find a uh, Quilcon skiff, dig through it, find some weapons, and said so they're going to they're going to rescue Yoda. They find him on the on the Quilcon platform. Quilcon leadership is trying to get Yoda to talk, and well, Yoda's not talking. So, the uh, Taraki show up to uh, save Yoda, bringing his life. Yoda explains that it wasn't the ropes that were kept that were uh, keeping him there. It was uh, some of the Kirklon kids that were stuck watching, oh, watching him. The Kirklon leader shows up and... Uh, Bree, Yoda's uh, ally, stabs the leader with uh, Yoda's lightsaber. Despite Yoda trying not to get him not to do so, that is where the issue ends. I, I kind of like the fact that this is done in a different manner from Obi Wan as I thought, it, as I presumed it would be. It's not. You know, Yoda reminiscing on various old adventures. It's just one story, which technically is set in the High Republic era, which I, I don't know what ends about a, which would put this around the same time as the upcoming uh, Star Wars: The Acolyte uh, series that's going to be on Disney Plus eventually. But anyways, moving on to our next book, we've got Alien Number Four. Where we left off, Steel Team had been betrayed. They were wading through all the, uh, the Xenomorphs as best they could. Until, but, and realizing that uh, their dropship is being uh, taken by those still on Toddler 9. But, uh, one of. The humans on, from Tauber 9 is not, seems to be sick with something. And Steel Team manages to escape the, uh, the hive and, uh, take a brief moment to mourn their lot. One, the one of them that's lost on the dropship. The infected human uh, starts to turn into something and attacks the others rather gruesomely with her tongue quartering its own mouth. The dropship ends up crashing and exploding. And the one that was infected with whatever it was gets loose. Turns out she, but, uh, and they go out and Lee and that one leads the, the hive to where the humans are hiding 
and the issue ends with uh, one of the younger members, one of the younger surviving humans, hiding in a locker, as the as the rest of the uh, Talbot nine humans are, are killed. Aliens getting dark. That's for I mean, it's always dark, but yeah. It's, I'm also liking where it's going, and yeah. I I, I like the the concept of there having been a uh, a special, basically an an all synthetic special forces team. That's kind of neat. I, I imagine they don't have uh, there are bits of programming that most synthetics have that uh, Steel Team doesn't. But or at least. If they if they do, it's modified. Moving on to our last book for the moment, we've got Predator number six. This is wrapping up the first arc and the first volume. So, where we left off, uh, Theta had been taken prisoner on uh, planet Tuscat. Aboard the uh, Astar Industries ship uh, Turnstone, she had managed to escape her cell as the predator was the predator was arriving at, at the ship, and is trying to convince uh, the commander of the ship to let her go, or at least give her weapons and armor so that she can take on the predator herself. He agrees, and they come up with a plan. But the Predator is making its way through the ship, killing anyone it runs into. They try to trigger the into the docking bay, but uh, the Predator starts to go in, and but but well, something's up and leaps and steps away. Instead of sending a little, little uh, drone in, which uh, causes a massive explosion. The uh, ship's not happy, and she, and she's trying gripes, rips her, tries to rip uh, Theta a new one, but she's just like, "Hey, I tried to warn you, but you didn't listen." Well, dude gets ripped in half for his, uh, for his crap. Then, uh, Theta takes on the, the, new, the newly arrived Predator, knocking off its helmet, to only to, oh, getting it to take off its helmet, only to reveal it's the one that killed her parents. But, uh, Apollo, one of the, uh, crewmen that had helped, that had, uh, tried to help her, does help her take some shots at the predator and uh, before well Theta finishes the predator off cutting his head off and uh, mounting it and so turns out that his plan now is to go at, is to basically wipe out the predator the, all the predators all of them and that is where the series ends for now, we've already got a teased uh, follow-up, which will be somewhat similar to uh, Predators. So, I don't know exactly when that's supposed to come out, hopefully soon. But uh, anyway, that is going to do it for now. As always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Links to my Facebook, Twitter, Patreon, and PayPal can be found in the description box down below. This is Rock and Roll Spock signing off saying, live long and rock hard.